course, uh, black holes are the subject of your research and they were also the subject of uh, a paper that you recently published, uh, the work that you did, and it was featured on Nature Astronomy, I think in the March edition. Yes. Could you just briefly tell us about uh, the research and what are we exactly trying to understand here? Yes, I was very excited uh, to have that uh, paper, uh, not only in Nature, but it was also the cover story. And, uh, you know, it's, it's one of these benchmarks in the field uh, that you always feel glad uh, to have sort of reached and touched. Uh, it's it's There are certain classes of black holes in the universe, you know, like um, generally black holes in a large speak, they are only of three kinds. Uh, you can have black holes that are at the centers of the galaxies. Uh, they are millions to billions of uh, size bigger than of our sun in terms of weight. Uh, one of the beautiful pictures of that was taken recently uh, by our colleagues at the Event Horizon Telescope. That was the first picture of a black hole. And those are the black holes which are at the centers of galaxies. So, for example, our own Milky Way galaxy has a black hole which is 4 million times the size of our sun, by mass of our sun, more technically. Uh, and so those those black holes are really what you call you know, everything evolves around them in terms of a galaxy. So our sun makes an orbit around the center of our black holes and all galaxies do that. And those black holes are pretty standard. You know, they exhibit certain behaviors that we that are very interesting. The second category of black holes are the ones when a star dies. And this is it's all the, one of the legendary works of Subramaniam Chandra Shekhar that he found out at what mass does a star die and become a white dwarf and beyond which, you know, it would end up being as a black hole. So those black holes are the ones that LIGO finds. Um, you know, the black holes that are just like 50 times bigger than our sun, or 30 times or 10 times bigger than our sun. And they can, I mean, LIGO is right now able to find them almost till half the age of the observable universe. So it's pretty far out we are able to see and study these black holes. But then there is this mass gap. You know, you have you can either have a black hole from a star which is only 100 times bigger than sun and then the galactic centers are at least a million times bigger than sun. So there is this from 100 to million, it doesn't seem a natural way the universe makes black holes. And that had always intrigued me since I was a graduate student and I was able to at least fully able to um, understand this problem that can the universe have a preference of making black holes? And when you look at just Einstein's general theory of relativity, the math for a 10 solar mass, a black hole which is only 10 times bigger than sun versus thousand or versus million is the same. You know, the black holes are the simplest objects in the universe. You, they are just so simple, it's astounding how simple <laughs> the formulation is. Uh, as uh, Chandra once said that, you know, you can, the only thing that makes black holes is our um, mind concepts of what is space and what is geometry. Like you don't need anything else. Like there is no physical description of the world that is there in it. It's pure geometry. And so it exists already is very bizarre. But so these black holes cannot exist by many sort of, um, or we are unable to find out very conclusively if they exist. So that paper was one of the one of sort of the attempts to figure out a way that through gravitational wave detectors like LIGO and more the future gravitational wave detectors, the one which will send in space, can we find this kind of a new class of um, mid-sized black holes? Uh, you can say they're mid-sized, you can say them intermediate mass black holes, but they are essentially a new class of black holes. And the reason, it's not just about finding them and making a stamp and saying that, oh, you know, this black hole also exists. If they exist, they are a leftover sort of replicas of an era of the universe that is not around us right now. So if you find a black hole, which is, let's say, uh, 200 times bigger than the sun, it is impossible to make it out of a star 
but it came form from the very first stars that were born in the universe because those were really big stars they could be primordial black holes that stephen hawking had very famously predicted and uh, we still don't fully understand how galaxies you know have this million billion solar mass black hole at the start you know like how do you have a mass concentration of a billion solar mass suddenly there in the universe and what we one possible pathway is that the universe first makes this intermediate mass black holes and then they start feeding them over the time and they become this so these black holes are very connected to what the universe is right now but they are not there around us at this point and that's what is extremely fascinating i think in terms of trying to understand so the paper actually laid out a few calculations of where and how you can find this black holes with gravitational waves